we begin another Holy Week. I don't think each year we come to Holy Week, we're quite the same people as we were a year earlier, only because we're enriched, we're affected, we're blessed, sometimes we're struck by the situations, the experiences, the call to growth, perhaps the disappointment at times of our previous year. Uh, I will share with you just briefly, uh, a week ago today, uh, my father passed on Sherland Sunday. And so I spent this day a week ago with my brother uh, preparing his room to be emptied and we will celebrate the funeral now just because of the way things work uh, the, the week following Easter. And so I have to say, this particular Holy Week is already beginning a little bit differently. I recall, and as I did last year, the statement of Viktor Frankl, who had in his famous work, Man's Search for Meaning, a great quote about suffering and meaning that goes like this. What it is to give light must endure burning. Our lives are called to give light, and they endure burning. Not that the burning is all bad, it means we expend ourselves so that the light may shine. But we celebrate this week the ultimate one who endures burning, so to speak, so that his light might shine not only for his life, but a light that will affect absolutely all of us and all of humanity. We begin Holy Week having experienced this year of call to be light, but also endure the burning, the call to be consumed by something greater than us. The challenges, the tensions, sometimes the difficulties such as polarizations and other things that we've experienced in our country, communities, our families, have challenged us all quite a bit. And yet the feature of tension is always in the church and always in our lives. It's a key feature of the gospel. And it comes to us at the apex of this liturgical time, this holy week, when our Lord Jesus Christ gives the unexpected, ultimate, and final confrontation between light and darkness. Jesus Christ is absolutely amazing, astounding and astonishing. Many would say he's absolutely unbelievable. Another philosopher, I like to quote this time of the year, was an atheist, a very famous 20th century philosophy, Bertrand Russell. And he talks about the unbelievable way of Jesus Christ. And he states the following, the problem with Christianity is not that it wasn't a good religion that inspired humanity to live well, but what it proposed was impossible for man to realize. <laughs> Many would say Russell was right, but now we watch the man and the journey of Jesus Christ. And because the vision is only possible to realize with God's help, the Lord Jesus Christ shows us the way. And this week, we watch and honor the unique path with intrigue, confusion, maybe even some horror at what, what the pathway is to the Easter event. I conclude with a brief summary of our second reading. Paul's letter to the Philippians is one of the richest theological hymns and texts of the New Testament. We have heard it today. He was in the form of God, and yet he did not exploit or take advantage of what it meant to be God. Rather, he did something absolutely absurd this one who was like God emptied himself, taking the form of a, not just servant, but a slave. And he was obedient. He rested on his father all the way, all the way to the point of giving all, death 
on a cross. That is why we exalt him. This unique, absurd, unbelievable, as Russell says, impossible way. And because of this, every knee would bend and proclaim Jesus Christ is Lord. Thank God, God blazes the way. And what now is impossible is possible only in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. Pope Francis said a while ago about this event, there are many people who admire Jesus. He said and did beautiful things and was filled with love and forgiveness. His example changed history. They admire him, but their lives are still not changed. To admire Jesus is not enough. We have to follow in his footsteps, to let ourselves be challenged by him, to pass from mere admiration to amazement at what the Son of God has done for the world. Brothers and sisters in Christ, may we be moved to greater amazement this holy week. God bless you.